uh, good morning. My name is Jake Adams and I'm the Chief Development Officer here at Southwest Human Development. Welcome to our In the Know webinar. Uh, we appreciate your support and for joining us this morning. We focus on young children age zero to five, and then we look for areas where there are gaps in services. Uh, and services for young children with disabilities is a huge area of opportunity, not just for our society, but especially in the state of Arizona. Uh, we could be doing a lot better. So some examples you'll learn about today are pretty obvious um, that a child uh, could use a little bit of extra help. Um, and, and we're one of the really few places where families can go to get that help. Uh, our DAP shop, for example, is uh, very unique, not just in Arizona, but in the nation. So you will not find uh, an ADAPT shop like uh, program in every city. But it's important to keep in mind, our state does have an early in intervention program called uh, AZIP, the Arizona Early Intervention Program. Um, but we have high thresholds to qualify for service. So my family is a great example of that. So when we realized our son Jack had a speech delay when he was one, uh, his development was tested and he did not qualify. Um, so we were fortunate. Uh, we have an HSA um, that allowed us to uh, use those funds to pay the $300 a month uh, that it costs as part of our copay to have my colleague, uh, Juliet, who you're gonna meet shortly, uh, come to our home and do speech therapy uh, with Jack and my wife and, and, uh, and myself. So speech therapy, we actually do all the, she helps him once a, uh, for an hour a week, but it's the things that the parents learn and we, we use throughout the week uh, when, when uh, Juliet wasn't there that really does a lot of the work. Um, but I'm so glad to say he's caught up with his peers today after uh, eight months of speech therapy, and he's he's five now and in kindergarten, just doing terrific. So you can easily imagine, though, that that $300 a month would really be unattainable for a lot of uh, families. So now I want to introduce you to two of my favorite colleagues, Beth Rank and Juliet Lutz. Uh, these two professionals, Beth is an occupational therapist and Juliet, a speech therapist. They work really closely with the families that we serve to support the best possible outcome for that child. And every child's gonna have a different outcome, but it's pretty amazing what they do uh, with uh, working with families. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to Beth and Juliet. Hi, I'm Juliet. Oh, that sound came out really weird. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Hi, I'm Juliet. I'm a speech language pathologist with the Children's Developmental Center at Southwest Human Development. Uh, I work with the Children's Developmental Center, both as part of their evaluation process and their ongoing therapy services. So the Children's Developmental Center actually provides both of those services, the evaluation and therapy services for children birth to five. Um, as Jake mentioned, we're really looking for any, any areas that may be underserved for a family that either maybe didn't qualify for um, early intervention services through AZIP or maybe some families that did qualify for those services, but the services that they're seeking may be specific uh, specialties they may not have available at their agency. So they may get a referral to the Children's Developmental Center. And our process begins with an evaluation by the full team at CDC. And it'll include a variety of professionals, just depending on what the family's specific concerns are at that time. So, I mean, that can be anything from psychologists, speech therapists, occupational therapists. We've got a dietitian, we've got behavioral health counselors, feeding therapists, and developmental specialists as well. Uh, there, there are really kind of few options for families that are looking for certain diagnoses and services, um, specifically diagnoses of autism. Uh, we, we provide that evaluation pretty frequently for families that can't get it elsewhere. But our waiting lists and the waiting lists of other agencies that provide that rare service are getting pretty long. And Southwest Human, Human Development is unique in that we are actually able to uh, start evaluation services for maybe some of the other disciplines like speech therapy, developmental special instruction, and actually offer ongoing therapy services while that family is waiting for the evaluation so that they don't feel like they're stuck in this holding pattern of waiting to get a diagnosis before we can actually start serving them for therapy services. Um, another uh, program that we offer uh, through Southwest Human Development is additional assistive technology. 
and we call that AT sometimes. It refers to basically anything that we can use to provide adaptations, um, access, uh, support for children with disabilities to participate more fully and independently in, in every environment um, and in all of the, their social interactions with family and friends as well. Uh, when we speak of assistive technology, we're not always talking about tech. We hear that word tech and kind of get stuck on that sometimes, but actually we offer a huge variety of supports. It can be any kind of adaptation we make for a child that can help them improve their abilities to achieve success with whatever their developmental goals are. That can be communication. It can be um, helping them to play, read books, use technology, achieve mobility, um, anything that they can do to kind of improve their specific goals. For communication, assistive technology can be anything from picture cards that represent words um, that children can point or select and offer. Um, high tech devices with really interactive vocabulary, voice output, um, and, and we also offer services for children with gross and fine motor goals, um, inserts in their seating to provide supported seating systems all the way up to a custom designed and fabricated seating um, that, that we offer that are, that's made and fabricated in our shop. The ADAPT shop includes our workshop for custom builds, um, creating adaptations for equipment, and we also have a big lending library that's available to families to try equipment out before placing their orders, maybe through insurance or finding, finding that resource another way. Um, so right now I'm gonna hand it over to Beth. She's gonna talk a little bit more about Adapt Shop referrals, the resources and the lending library that we have available to them. Good morning, thank you for joining. I apologize, I lost my audio, so I had to pop in and out. But thank you, Juliet, for uh, giving us a great overview about the programs that we have, and especially the Adapt Shop, um, where I am blessed to be able to work. Um, I absolutely love my job, and I've been there for five years. And I just, you know, am grateful for every single family that gets a chance to walk in our door. And really hope that by sharing this uh, webinar, that we can get more kids through the door. Um, so, as you can see, kind of in the photos, we have. Uh, our workshop, as Juliet mentioned, where we do a lot of custom fabrications. And then we also have quite a large loan closet that has um, anything from equipment to help a child crawl, to help sit up in a high chair better, to we have some trikes and even an adult bike that you can put a child on the back to take a ride out in the community. Um, and that loan closet is available free to families. We just ask that they have a referral and a script from a physician. Um, and, oh, you know, we're happy to give you that information later if you need the referral information and the contacts for who to direct the referrals to. Um, so, so um, one of the things that's been really nice about COVID is we we've always liked to have involvement with the community, but with the COVID and having more things online, we've really been able to add in all the practitioners that are working with families. Um, so generally, you know, we get the referral information, the families come in, we do maybe an hour to an hour and a half evaluation with the family at the ADAPT shop. If their therapist is available, we'll Zoom them in. Um, sometimes they come in person as well. And then we try to, you know, really collaborate with families to figure out how we can help them, whether that's, uh, you know, looking at a piece of commercial equipment that maybe they want to borrow and actually test out in their home to maybe they need something that doesn't, that isn't available commercially that we need to fabricate and make in our workshop. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a very um, unique process. Each child ends up with something a little bit different. We make the custom fabrications to meet the child's exact specifications. So it's, it's a really neat process. And, you know, it is really important that we have the family's input because this equipment is designed, you know, to hold up a child and help them breathe and eat and um, do their daily activities of daily living better, but it also needs to fit into a family's home and their life. So we really like to have a lot of input from the families to make sure whatever we are making is going to be helpful and not just another piece of furniture in their house. Um, and I did want to share, I have two families that... I wanted to share with you. This little guy is named Roman and he um, came into us through the AZIP program. So I actually got to see him a couple times. You'll see the photo on the left is when he was a little younger. And at that point he was not sitting up. So we were working on just kind of finding 
the right support for him to be able to sit up and play and use his hands and also for his eyes to kind of be able to see what was right in front of him. And then you can see kind of the photo later, which is probably about two years later, he was, he had mastered sitting, was playing a lot with his hands, but he still was not standing and bearing weight on his own through his legs. So what we ended up doing was kind of making a bigger chair that fit him better, but also gave him some stability around his legs and knees so he could actually move from that seated position up to standing. And it wasn't, you know, apparent that it was coming up behind him and holding him under his armpits. So that's Roman. And then one other thing that's been really um, interesting and kind of more of a new uh, development in our program is that we've had quite a few kids come who have been on palliative or hospice care. And you know, our services are really uniquely set up to help these children because you know, most of the times if you order something through insurance, it takes a bare minimum of three months time. And sometimes these children, this is little Gia and she's just so sweet. She, she died before she was three. So when you look at how long three months is, when you only live to be three, it's too long. And these families need support faster and they need it to be able to be changed quickly. And the, the really neat thing about the adapt shop is we're able to do that and kind of meet the families where they are with what they need at that moment. Um, so she's, she's a sweetheart. And um, I, I think that's all I really have to say. We're happy to answer questions. I think at the very end, we really just appreciate your support and getting the word out about the adapt shop and helping us you know help families find us so they can get the services they need for their kids thank you beth for sharing that and also the work you're doing day in and day out to support these kids uh, same for you julia you know it, it makes our work um, really impactful to have you professionals in the field helping them so my name is David. I'm on the development team here at Southwest Human Development. And I'm going to introduce you in a second to Johan Andrade, who participated in our Makers of Change Assistive Technology Challenge um, last year. So the challenge is actually ongoing currently. Um, and I'll have Johan share his experience and fill you in. Johan? Yes. So as you said, thank you, David. So my name is Johan Andrade. I'm a freshman at ASU and I'm majoring in aerospace engineering. So I participated in the Makers Making Change project my senior year of high school, so my final year. And I, I can say confidently that it was an unforgettable experience and that it prepared me for my future. Um, it was the first real life example I've had in terms of an engineering project. I had a budget, a design, constraints of that design, not only that, but I had an actual user slash consumer who was going to, to use, was going to use a product I was making. So um, something that's really important to me with this project was the exposure with people with special needs. I know something, something, something you kind of always hear about, but you don't learn about it. You kind of just, it's right there, but there's, it's not really in depth. So, um, and it's just amazing to learn what people are doing, what you guys are doing to help with kids, special needs, kind of help them reach and kind of just move forward with it. That's something that really inspired me and kind of made me continue working, made me want to continue working with uh, kids with special needs. So I started on a Connect4 project that is playable entirely with a single push of a button or a movement of a joystick. There's a couple images there showing one of the, um, one way in which the box moves side to side and the actual whole design of the project. As you can see, it's a pretty big one, it's five foot by five foot, but it's something that's gonna be fully automatic and just can be played with just about anyone. So my team fundraised our own money, we raised over $2,500 and now we're buying the materials to finish uh, building it. So my goal in starting this project was to bring smiles and new opportunities with kids, with kids with special needs. That's the main reason I wanted to do this project. And sure, I learned engineering. Sure, I learned how to um, I learned my own experiences, but I feel to me, the most important part of this project was gonna be the outcome and get in, then giving it to Excel School, which is a school dedicated to kids, for kids with special needs. And I don't think I may have started this project if it weren't for the opportunity to partic uh, participate in the makers of, making, uh, makers of Making Change, sorry, challenge. So yeah, that was incredible. Thank you, Johan. Um, Johan is just one of the students. This year we actually have 
101 teams participating. So that's a 10x increase from last year when Johan was a part of it. Um, so thank you, Johan, so much. So I would like to share a little bit about different ways for you guys to get involved. So we've talked about the Makers event, which is happening right now. And we need your support. With so many teams, we need more judges. So if you have some STEM skills, or maybe you know somebody who works in a technology field, please let them know about this event. Um, the judging is about a four to six hour commitment between October 20th and October 25th. It's fully virtual and mostly on your own time. We also then invite you to join us on October 30th for our final presentation. We will have live presentations from our finalists on that day, um, just eight of them though. So we have limited attendance in person, but we do invite you to join us for the live stream. And then the other big opportunity coming up is our Easter Seals Golf Classic. So we have a sell out event this year. We have a lot of fun planned for the golfers, but as you can imagine, it's all hands on deck. So the more volunteers we have, the more fun everybody will experience, and we could really use your support in that event. So uh, lastly, I would like to introduce you to one of our partners, uh, Brittany Forbush from Mountain America Credit Union. Um, they have been the presenting sponsors on our Makers of Change Challenge for multiple years. And it goes beyond that because they've had their team uh, members come out and volunteer, filling a lot of gaps for us um, with their hands and their heart. So I will hand it over to Brittany. Thanks, Dave. So as mentioned, I'm with Mountain America Credit Union, and this is our third year that we have sponsored Makers of Change. It's part of our partnership with the Arizona Coyotes and our Guiding You Forward program. So we support the Makers of Change as well as early literacy programs. Um, and for us, it's all about giving back to the community and fulfilling that credit union philosophy of people helping people. And that's just what Makers of Change is all about. Um, you heard Johan talking about getting hands-on experience, but it's people like Johan and the uh, great folks at Southwest Human Development that are making changes in these kids' lives. So Johan gets the chance to create new technologies that really allow kids to live their best life. So that's what it's all about for us. And when I had the opportunity to first tour the Adapt Shop about two years ago, I was just amazed with what you can do. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is dry. And also um, how something as simple as an insert on a wheelchair or um, Sorry about that. Um, or a seat when they can't sit up, that's going to change a child's life. And it's so important that you do that at an early age, as you mentioned, from zero to five. So we just want to thank Southwest Human Development and people like Johan and everyone else involved for the impact you are making and for the hope and confidence you're giving these children. So thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Um, we could not do our work without generous donors um, in the audience, as well as uh, corporate partners such as yourself um, supporting the work. And yes, like you said, it's the early intervention that makes a huge difference for these children. Um, so thank you everybody for making these important programs possible. We really appreciate everybody coming to join us. Um, this is, you know, really important work. We love the opportunity to share the nitty gritty of what Beth and Julia are doing on a daily basis to impact lives. And you guys are the reason that work is possible. So thank you, everybody. If you have any questions about the Adapt Shop, Makers, or anything at all, that's my cell phone. Call me up or shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to answer those or direct you inside the agency to the personnel that can. So without further ado, Thank you again for joining us. 